Hi everyone, today I'm excited to share how I've organized my experimental synth setup. In this cozy corner of my home studio I make electronica style music that is calm and relaxing. Um, the setup is the perfect contrast to my techno setup, which I only turn to when I'm full of energy. Here I immerse myself in tranquility, exploring peaceful sounds and experimenting with various synths and modules I have on hand. So, let's get an overview. The heart of my setup is uh, the modular case. I've originally designed it as an alternative to the Buchler Music Easel, which is unfortunately beyond my budget. My goal was to assemble a collection of modules that could replicate the easel's workflow. While nothing can truly replace the real thing, I've had some great experiences with this setup. Over time the case has evolved into something different and I also felt the need to include an external sequencer, the Oxy-1. The setup now consists of a classic two oscillator patch where each oscillator is paired with an envelope, a filter and uh, two effect modules. I've also added a small sampler and a hi-hat module for some background textures. So this is where I craft the main melodies and focus on tweaking the filters and effect parameters. The Oxy-1 serves as a primary sequencer for melodies, as well as the central clock and trigger source for the sampler, delay sync and external synth. While experimenting with my modular setup, I found myself missing polyphonic pads. To fill the gap, I connected my Roland J6 to the Prophet 8, using it as an ultra-compact MIDI keyboard arpeggiator and chord generator. The Prophet's output is routed to the Boss DD200 delay pedal. I chose the DD200 because it delivers excellent sound quality, has a good range of functions and is one of the few affordable delay effects with MIDI sync. Sometimes I bring in my Moog DFAM or the Subharmonicon to add analog percussion and bass lines. I also use a Teenage Engineering pocket operator for drums. And my ST Modular Krakong over here is another fantastic tool for crafting wild and unique sound effects. All synths are mixed with a 16-channel line mixer from Behringer. 
where I can also add a send effect from the GFI system specular tempus effect pedal. Okay, let's take a closer look at the individual synth. The main sound sources of my modular case are the ST modular Altstaden and the Behringer Victor. The Altstaden is particularly effective with its five different waveforms, internal mixer and EQ. The two wave shapers uh, contribute a great deal to the variability and organic analog sound of this oscillator. Victor offers excellent value for just 100 bucks, letting me layer four distinct waves and adjust their levels with an easy to access joystick. The Altstaden delivers a thick, raw analog sound while Victor typically handles higher and clearer wavetable tones. Both are routed through a filter, in this case the ST modular AFI and Carl Low Pass filters, which are each controlled by a Cyan function generator. Cyan acts as an attack and decay envelope, opening the filter each time it receives a gate from the Oxy1 sequencer. The great thing here is that I can control attack and decay via CV to make patches more varied and dynamic. After passing through the EFI filter, the Altstaden signal is routed to the Make Noise Mimophone and Happy Nerding FX add, and then into a small mixer in a 4MS port case next to the main modular case. Though only mono is required, I use a little uh, stereo mixer here. I don't tweak the FX set knobs much, but I love experimenting with the Mimophone's parameters, especially the feedback and the delay frequency zones. The skew function, which allows you to control the repetitions for the left and right channels separately, is also great fun. The Behringer Victor Wavetable Synth is connected to a small Pico DSP module from Erica Synth for simple delays. And it's then routed to my ST modular Microsum CP3 Moog style mixer, which adds a very distinct tone to the sounds. Here I mix the Victor's output with signals from the bus, the grandpa sampler, and a hi hat module. All three are then routed to the intelligent Celex for further delay and reverb processing before being sent to the small sub mixer mentioned before. Okay, let's listen how each part of this setup sounds. This is the Altstaden oscillator, filtered by the EFI low pass filter, which goes into the mimophone. So this is the raw signal, introducing mimophone delay and reverb from the Happy Nerding FX8. It's a very simple melody, but it works great in the background. So let's now introduce the Behringer Victor. This is the raw signal, this is the signal with the delay from the Pico DSP applied, and finally it goes to the intelligible Celex delay and reverb. Let's add some feedback. some noise. And the same thing on the Make Noise Mimophone for the Altstaden baseline.
Now let's unmute the bust uh, grandpa sampler. So you can hear this little percussion in the background. And now I also unmuted the hi-hat module. Occasionally, I also connect a pocket operator to the submixer for additional drums and percussion. Here I'm using the PU32, which is based on the Sonic Charge Microtonic Drum and Percussion PST that I've been using in my DAW for over 20 years now. What's great about the PU32 is that you can prepare drum kits in the VST and load them directly onto the device. Also, check out the Sonic Charge Patternarium, which is an endless source of microtronic drum grooves. If needed, the PO can be synced via trigger from the Oxy-1 sequencer. Finally, the output from the submixer is sent to the Behringer Rack Mixer. The Oxy-1 is my main sequencer, handling everything from playing both modular oscillators to triggering envelopes, the sampler, the hi-hat module, and syncing delays, the DFAM and pocket operator. On track 1, I program notes for the Altstaden oscillator. Track 2 holds melodies for Victor, with both tracks set to the same melodic scale. Track 3 is dedicated to triggers and pitch CV for the hi-hat module. While track 4 provides 8 more trigger tracks for controlling the sampler and syncing other devices. The cool thing about using these triggers for synchronization is that you can easily adjust the sync tempo by adding or removing triggers, effectively increasing or decreasing the tempo. All track sequences are stored in patterns over here that I can play and rearrange to my liking. I use the Roland J6 as a MIDI keyboard to play notes, chords and arpeggios on the Prophet 8. It's incredibly handy, offering a vast collection of chords that can be activated with the chord button. Plus, it has plenty of preset rhythms that are easy to apply. I can also save chord progressions on the steps at the top for more complex melodies. However, I mostly use it to play the Prophet 8 live without pre-recorded sequences or I just set one note on hold and let the LFOs on the Prophet take over. The Prophet 8 is my favorite synth for pads, strings and all sorts of polyphonic sounds. It sounds fantastic and is super easy to use and I really like how it looks and feels. But I won't dive too deep into the details here, otherwise this video would get too long. The Moog DFAM is my favorite for percussion-like sounds, which I route through a G-Biz Micro Dervish reverb or delay effect to add some more depth. I usually connect the velocity output to the VCF mod input to shape the filter according to the velocity settings. To my ears, it sounds better with this connection in 90% of all patches. 
I don't normally approach programming with a specific idea in mind. Instead, I just uh, experiment until I find something that sounds right. That's actually always the case for me when I produce music. When I ran out of ideas and need inspiration for DFAM patches, I take a look at the patchlibrary.net website, where you can find patches from other users that show all the connections and knob positions in pictures. It's really cool. I sync the DFAM using one of the Oxy1 trigger outputs and occasionally control parameters via CV from the Chaos Devices Batumi LFO module. Let's add some more reverb here. So in this case, the Batumi LFO opens and closes the VCO DK, which makes it a bit more organic. I use the Moog Subharmonicon alongside a Mutimal Instruments Clouds clone running the awesome Oliver Reverb algorithm to add background textures and sometimes bass lines. I won't go into much detail here too since it's a pretty straightforward setup. However, I want to emphasize that the Subharmonicon is an incredibly unique synthesizer capable of creating polyrhythmic sequences that are difficult to replicate with other units. This is one of my latest big synthesizer designs, the Krakong. It's a pure sound exploration machine that operates outside conventional boundaries. It's capable of generating all kinds of experimental and unheard sounds. It's always a thrill to be surprised by what it can produce. The core of the Krakong consists of two oscillator voices, a multi-mode filter in the middle and three random sequences. And everything is internally connected and influences each other. I primarily use it for background effects, subtle bleeps and all sorts of quirky sounds. For more details on this unique synthesizer and all of my other designs, please visit my website link below. And there you have it, my ambient experimental electronica production corner in all its glory. And now let's dive in and hear what it sounds like.
feel free to like and subscribe and see you soon.